Hello students, so this is the second video. So in first video we cover the, the brief introduction of the sexual reproduction, definition, the events and the location of sexual reproduction. We covered the structure of the flower also. In that pre-fertilization structure we studied in your detail manner. Under that one we covered the stamen structure, the TS of hang and the microsporangia and one heading is remaining, that is a pollen grain. Yeah? So before that one, so now we will cover the how the development of anther occurs. Means the female reproductive structure stamen is there at the tip of that one. So how the anther develops. So this is the extension of the cellulose So development of anther means initially, so anther means it is a homogeneous mass of meristematic tissue surrounded by the epidermis. So this is a meristematic tissue and surrounded by epidermis. Finally, so after differentiation, the anther is like this one. So this figure we covered in last video only. So initially it is a homogeneous mass of meristematic tissue surrounded by epidermis. This is a meristematic tissue. So this meristematic tissue differentiate and produce some specialized cell. So these are called as a archi sporean cell. Yes? So these are the archi sporean cell. Now these archi sporean cell organized in a such a way, these are present in the four corners of this anther. Clear? And this archi sporean cell undergo division and produce two types of cell. So, outer primary parietal cell and inner primary sporogenous cell. Means, so these Archisporic cell undergo division and produces the outer primary parietal cell and inner primary sporogenous cell. So now what is the fate of these cells? The primary sporogenous cell differentiate and produce microspore mother cell and primary parietal cell undergo repeated and pericranial division and this will produce the anther wall. Yes, can you remember this one? This is a figure of ang anther. So from outside to inside four layers are present. Epidermis, endothelium, middle layer, tapetum. All these four layers produce from the this primary parietal cell. That is nothing but the anther wall. And inside this is microsporangia or inside to that one microspore mother cell cell. So what is the fate of this microspore mother cell? That is the next topic only. So this is a development of anther. So after this one anther will form like this. Okay? So this is the extension not given in the textbook one. So now next topic is a microsporogenesis. Yes? So, still pollen grain topic now, not we start here. Okay? So, next heading is a micro sporogenesis. As the name suggests, micro means smaller, spore means smaller spores, genesis means synthesis. Micro sporogenesis, definition I write, it is Formation and differentiation of microspore from um, 
माइक्रोस्पोर और पोलन मदर सेल थ्रू मेयोसिस डेफिनेशन इज इजी माइक्रोस्पोरेंस मीन्स फॉर्मेशन एंड डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ द माइक्रोस्पोर फ्रॉम पोलन मदर सेल थ्रू मीओसिस दिस इज द माइक्रोस्पोरोजेनेसिस नाउ वेयर दिस माइक्रोस्पोरोजेनेसिस ऑकर्स सो व्हेन यू टेक दिस एन एंड अदर वन सो दिस इज द माइक्रोस्पोर इन हियर इनसाइड माइक्रोस्पोर मदर सेल्स आर देयर दिस आर आल्सो कॉल्ड एज पोलन मदर सेल दिस माइक्रोस्पोर मदर सेल अंडरगो मीओसिस इन माइक्रोस्पोर इन हियर फ्रॉम ईच माइक्रोस्पोर इन हियर फोर फोर माइक्रोस्पोर्स आर प्रोड्यूस so pictorially we can say this. so this is a microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell it undergo meiosis and produce four microspores or so this process is nothing but meiosis pollen mother cell is diploid now this composite structure is called as the microspore tetra four microspores are present so still they are not separated clear so now microspore tetra Types we will discuss here. So, types one. So, microspore tetra may be like this one. so arrangement of all four microspores either it is a tetra hedral either it is a iso by lateral or it is a decuse or it is a linear or it is a t shape so this is a microsporogenesis but it is the extension of cells so microsporogenesis means when the pollen mother cell undergo meiosis and produce the microspores through the process called the meiosis so ultimately they produce a microspore tetra clear so all these microspores are held together by common wall and in between that one calyx is material is there clear understood so to separate all these four microspores one specific enzyme is necessary that enzyme is secreted by the tapetum layer so layer one that we covered in the last video the tapetum cell they produce the calyx enzyme that enzyme will come and act on this calyx wall and help in the separation of all four microspores yes now all five microspores are separated means all these event take place in this microspore only now microspore separate and each microspore have potential to develop into separate pollen grain means so this is a single microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell that produce four microspore tetra 
from this microspore trigger all microspores are separated and each microspore have potential to develop into separate pollen grain means from each pollen mother cell four pollen grains must be produced clear so based on this one numerical problems can be asked for example if each microspore in here contain 100 pollen mother cell then how many pollen grains are produced in the dipecus and clear like this one question we asked number may change one so these are the pollen grain the next heading is uh, this one pollen grain so how the pollen grains mature its structure its importance we are going to cover before that one so how the microspore development into pollen grain that is a pictorially given in the textbook so now how this process will take place so development of pollen grain from micro spore what happens so this is a micro spore this is a micro spore so surrounded by the membrane one so it has a nucleus in the center nucleus migrate towards one periphery but due to the asymmetrical spindles so now this microspore tetrad means these microspore are haploid in nature so this nucleus is a haploid so this is a microspore nucleus migrate towards the periphery and it undergo mitotic division so during that one the asymmetrical spindles are formed so these are the formatted and these are the spindles so nuclear division occurs so due to the asymmetrical spindles this is asymmetrical spindle fiber two unequal cells are produced one is a larger one one is a smaller so this larger cell with the irregular shaped nucleus and this has a regular shaped nucleus so this larger cell is called as a vegetative or tube cell and smaller cell is called as generative cell so this is a microspore this is a pollen grain clear yeah? this is a development of pollen grain pictorial the microspore is a haploid cell it contain single set of chromosome nucleus migrate towards the periphery due to the asymmetric spindle formation the unequal mitotic division takes place due to that one, one large cell is produced that is a vegetative cell and one small cell is produced that is a generative cell so gradually in this one the different layers are deposited outside so in time exact everything is formed gradually microspore mature into pollen grain still this pollen grain is a immature yeah so this is a pollen grain now the next topic is a in detail study of the pollen grain that we are going to cover in the same role after a short pause This is a development of pollen grain from the microscope. The same figure I drawn here, but with the uh, pollen wall. Okay. Now I will write the points. Parallel we will cover. Okay. Pollen grain. Uh, first point. It represent as male. 
geometry of atom. So in first year only, in the alternation of generation of plant kingdom, we covered the gametophyte and the sporophyte. If you take the angiosperm, the complete plant body is a sporophytic one. So flower contains a male recorded part. In that one, the male gamete is produced. That is nothing but the pollen grain. That's the pollen grain represent as a male gametophyte. But here still gametes are not generated. So when you take the this pollen grain is still immature. So this is a vegetative cell, this is a generative cell. Here also same, this is a vegetative cell, this is a generative cell. Yeah? So this pollen grain, second point, it is either spherical, ovoid or triangular in shapes. So it measures about twenty five to fifty micrometer in diameter. Yeah, it varies even from the species to species. So pollen grains pollen grain wall is made up of two layers now we we'll take this pollen grain so this larger cell is called as a vegetative cell or the tube cell that I written there. So this smaller cell is called as a generative cell. Yes. So this is the anther, uh, the pollen wall is made up of two layers. The inner wall is called as a in time. And outer wall is made up of is called as a exile. Yes. Now the main point we are going to cover here only outer layer is called as exile. This one here, yeah? which is made of exile. It is made up of special chemical called as sporopollenin. This is important one. Clear? Why it is important means sporopollenin, which is most resistant organic substance means so this poropolymin which can withstand in the high temperature strong acid strong alkali and even till today also uh, not a single enzyme can digest this poropolymin means uh, due to its resistance nature, the sporopollenin can resist the chemical degradation also and biological degradation also. So due to presence of this sporopollenin, this polar grain can be easily and safely preserved in the microfossils. Clear? Yeah? So sporopollenin important means this is the toughest organic substance which can withstand in strong acid alkali and high temperature and no enzyme can digest 
this plane. So functionally, the exine is very very important. Now, the exine is the outer layer. It is made up of chemical that is called the sporopolymer, yeah? which is the most resistant organic substance which can withstand strong acid, strong alkali also, and even high temperature. The enzyme also can't digest this exactly. That's why the polar wind can be preserved in the faucet zone. Now, second layer, this is the outer layer. Yes, the inner layer. made up of pectose and cellulose so which is elastic in nature so what is the function of entanglement when the pollen grain germinate means when it will build a particular moisture and the nutrient one this entire will come outside in the form of the pollen tube so the site of exit means the pollen tube will come out only to the germ pores now germ pore means so this these are the germ pore so now just correct this the polar grains are a male gametophyte. It measures about 25 to 15 micromillimeter. So it is either spherical, ovoid, or the triangular in nature. Its wall is made up of two layer: outer exine, inner entine. But exine is not deposited in some places. So for example, one, two, three. So the place where the sporopollen is not deposited, that aperture is called as a germ pore. Clear? When this pollen grain will get the moisture or the nutrient on the stigmatic surface one, this in time will come outside only through this germ pores one. So this will develop as a pollen tube. Clear? So this is about the pollen grain. Now, extra point means uh, the number of germ pores will vary. In dicots, three germ pores are there. That's why such pollen grains are called as a triculpate. In monopot, only one germ pore is there. That's why it is called as a monopulpate. Clear? So one more point. Pollen grains either two cell or three cell. Now what is the difference means when you take this pollen grain or this pollen grain in that two pollen grains are there, uh, cells are there. Two cell means so this is a pollen grain with the generative cell and the vegetative cell. Here, yeah? so these are the two cell. Ones. This is two cell. Three cell means the same pollen grain when so it is covered with the egg sign. When this generative cell initially it is present for the periphery. Here. Yeah? So, due to the dissolution of this wall, this generative cell suppates and suspended in the cytoplasm of this vegetative cell. So, this is vegetative cell, this is generative cell. So, this separate from the plasma. Now, this generative cell undergo mitotic division. So, if this generative cell undergo mitotic division, so this is a vegetative nucleus and these are the two male gametes. Can you differentiate? So, two cell pollen grain means in that one large vegetative cell is there. In the cytoplasm of this vegetative cell, generative cell is suspended. Clear? So, when this generative cell undergo mitotic division, so it produces two male gametes. Now, the male gametes are produced. So, this is a three cell one. This is three cell pollen grain. So, in three cell pollen grain, one vegetative nucleus and two male gametes are there. Can you differentiate? This pollen grain is an immature male gametophyte. When the male gametes are produced, that is a mature male gamete, means uh, gametophyte. Now, this process, the complete development of microscopic uh, pollen grain and formation of generative cell, vegetative cell, later on, 
formation of two male gametes. So this is called the micro gametogenesis. Clear? So means one more point. Sixty percent of angio sperms release pollen grain in two cell state and remaining and you suppose release pollen grain in three cell state. Yes, so this is about the pollen grain, means microsporogenesis and microgametogenesis. So, so in pre-fertilization structure, first we covered the stamen. It consists of filament and anther. Then we take on the transfer section of anther, where the anther wall and microsporangia structure is covered. So again, in detail, enlarged view of microsporangia we covered. So in that microsporangia, microsporogenesis takes place. Due to that, more microspores are produced. That microspore undergo maturation and produces the pollen grain one. That pollen grain on which the exam in time is deposited means the spore pollen and pectocellulose deposited. Gradually generative cell, vegetative cell is formed. That generative cell undergo mitotic division and produces the two male gamete. So this is about the male gametophyte called as a pollen grain. Clear? So some uh, small topics are related to the pollen grain still are clear. So the, its viability, its economic importance, and the cryo preservation. So, these small topics we will cover in the next video. Yeah? Till that, take care of yourself. Have a nice day.